Okay, so we're going to draw the Lewis structure for SeCl6. And so the first thing is we need to look at how are those atoms connected. Well, chlorine's more electronegative than selenium, and there's six of them. So those are going to go around the outside. So there's selenium. There's going to be six chlorines around the outside. And normally we've got top and bottom, right and left, and so then we kind of have to squeeze these guys in. And we can tell that this is going to violate the octet rule, but if we look at the periodic table, selenium is, where'd it go, is in period four, and so it can expand its octet. The next thing we need to do is look at, well, how many electrons do I have available for this molecule? And so selenium is in uh, group six, and there's one selenium, so there's six electrons from selenium. And then I have six chlorines, and they each have seven valence electrons. And so I think that's 48? Yes. So I have 48 dots. So I've already got two dots for each single bond. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and then I'm going to start putting lone pairs. Fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight. 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. That's a lot of dots. And then I want to check for octets. So each of these chlorine atoms has an octet. It has uh, three lone pairs, so six electrons here, plus the two in the bond. And all of these, they, they muddle together a little here, but they're all equivalent. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. When you counted 48 and when you put those um, lines in, mm -hmm. so like uh, around selenium, I can see because you said on each line you count the dot next to it. So next to selenium is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dots, which is equivalent to selenium having um, 6 valence electrons. For for but, formal but, charges, yes. But, but if now that you have drawn a line to it, so how many um, does that, that make selenium have? So is it 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12? Yes. So these bonds are shared electrons, and the shared electrons get counted by chlorine, and they get counted by selenium. So selenium says, well, all of these shared electrons belong to me. I've got 12 electrons. And selenium's a big, big girl, and she can handle that. Chlorine looks at this and says, these, this pair of electrons belongs to me. And so I've got two here, four, six, eight. I've got my octet. It's like me and my husband, we have six children. I have six children, he has six children, but there's only six children in the house, not 12. Because they belong to both of us, right? That's how, the, <laughs> seems like there's more. Um, but that's, that's how these shared electrons are. They belong to both. Okay. And here what I did is I, is I made a dot at the end of each line. Especially when you're first getting the hang of this, it's helpful to do that just to remind yourself that's a pair of electrons. Because sometimes the line doesn't look like a pair to you. Yes, you mentioned it in your YouTube video and I started doing that and that's kind of helping me. Good. Uh, especially with the other, yeah. Okay, so there's, there's the Lewis structure. And then we have these boxes over here. And the first one's asking, does this structure have resonance? Well, if we don't have any multiple bonds, no double or triple bonds, there's not going to be any resonance. Because in Chem 1A, the only resonance that we'll see is 
a double bond or a single bond moving around. So we're just going to say no. Oops, wrong pen. And then it asks us for formal charges. Okay. So I'm going to make a mess here on the, on the chart and then I'm going to erase it. So when we talk about formal charges, you want to, in your mind, break each of these bonds in half. It's kind of like we made a corporation of all these atoms, and now we're going to break it up and we're just going to cut it down the middle. So then we're going to look at how many electrons did chlorine bring to the corporation, to the molecule. Well, it brought seven, right? Yes. So chlorine brought seven, and then we look at, well, how many is it leaving with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. And so its formal charge is zero. Okay. In this business venture, chlorine broke even. Okay. It, it didn't gain or lose. And if we look at all the other chlorines, we don't have to repeat that process for all of them because they all have the same situation. Okay. Right? Yeah, send a picture with, yeah. So each of these has three lone pairs and a single bond. And so when we cut that single bond, they're each going to have seven electrons. So all of the, all of the uh, chlorines are going to be zero. And then for the selenium in the middle, we look on the periodic table, or we, you know, we made a note down here. It brought six electrons. And then how many is it leaving with? Well, it's getting half of each of these bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so zero. Also zero. And so when you have all zero formal charges, that's a really good sign that that's probably a very nice Lewis structure. You can draw Lewis structures where everybody has octets and they're wrong because the Lewis, the uh, formal charges are higher than necessary. And by expanding an octet, you can lower the formal charges. So I'm gonna get rid of this red stuff. So we decided that the formal charge on selenium was zero and on chlorine was zero. Another thing that can make determining formal charges um, a lot faster is if we look at the Lewis structure for uh, a chlorine atom, it has seven valence electrons. Oops. And so if we look at how many unpaired electrons are in its Lewis structure, that's the number of bonds that it needs to make to have a, a zero formal charge. So anytime you see chlorine with a full octet and one bond, it has a zero formal charge. Um, say that again. If chlorine has a full octet and a and one and bond a charge. and a charge, in no, a, in like and a single bond, then it will have oh, a zero formal charge. Oh, okay, because that one line means two. <laughs> yeah, because that that single bond will be will make up its octet, but in formal charges, if we cut that in half, the chlorine gets to keep the one electron, and so it's the same seven it came with. Okay. That's true for all of the group seven metal uh, nonmetals. The group six form two bonds. The group three, uh, five, form three bonds. Um, okay. So, like... Um, Aluminum and all that. Well, aluminum is a metal, so it's a little different. But if we look at oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons, right? So yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. When I put those around, I've got two that are unpaired. And so that's going to make a bond, and this can make a bond. And when it does it like that, it'll have a zero formal charge. Now, sometimes oxygen does something else but then it has a formal charge. So if this idea makes sense to you, that's great. It can make things go faster. If it doesn't make sense to you, then just completely ignore it. From, um, no, it does make sense. Because um, 
from your um, YouTube video, you said hydrogen has one bond, carbon makes four bond, nitrogen makes three bonds, mm -hmm. uh, oxygen makes two, and fluorine makes one. Yes. <coughs> and I and I noted that. Um, so I'm kind of using that as a guideline also to to you know kind of keep me in line when I'm getting this. Yeah, and that's because like with nitrogen, there's five valence electrons, and so if you put the valence electrons around nitrogen, putting one on each side first. Let's use this one. One, two, three, four, and then you end up with one pair. You've got three that are not paired up. And so that tells me nitrogen would like to form three bonds. Oh, oh three are available for pairing. Right. And when, when it does that, it will get its octet, but when we cut those off, it keeps the original electrons it brought, and so its formal charge is zero. Hydrogen only has one valence electron, it only forms one bond. I see, yes. Um, the other mistake I was making was also um, with the hydrogen. I, for some reason, I because it's got that line and that uh, it, it, let's say hydrogen bonds with carbon so each time um there was a line from hydrogen to carbon i was counting the valence electron of hydrogen as two because i was thinking well okay there's that line which represents two yes so in in a um in a compound a molecule here the hydrogen has two electrons in that shared bond it has a duet of electrons. Hydrogen is too small to have an octet, so it'll have a yeah. duet. But then if we're looking at formal charges, we're going to cut that bond in half and let each, each atom take one of the electrons. And so then when we look at formal charge for hydrogen, he brought one electron and he's leaving with one electron, so the formal charge is zero. Okay. Hydrogen actually always has a formal charge of zero. Okay. Okay. So so let's finish this problem here. Yeah. Um, then it's asking um, for the number of bonding pairs. <coughs> and it's important to pay attention to the directions. The number of bonding pairs and lone pairs around the central atom. So we don't need to count all of these guys out here. We're just counting what's around selenium. Okay. So, so a pair, here's one pair, one, two, three, four, five, six pairs. Okay. And how many lone pairs are on selenium? Zero. Zero. <laughs> well, you know, if you look at a, a concert pianist play some very complicated piece, they make it look easy too, right? Because they've done it a lot and they've practiced a lot. So, but when they started, it wasn't easy.